My wife recently bought an Apple Watch, which means the Fitbit only has landed back on my wrist. But why is this supposed flagship device still retailing for apparently $400? probably the single most biggest letdown in tech that I've bought in the past two years. Today, we'll find out. Let's get into it. G'day, I'm Cam and I make tech videos every week. To give a little bit of context to what's wrong with the Fitbit and the original Versa, we have to give a bit of a backstory. Pebble were a smartwatch company that were Kickstarter funded. They had multiple e-paper display watches which had insane battery life and really good UI and apps were just really easy to use. Now Fitbit bought them out at the end of 2016. Now they didn't buy the watches, they more so wanted their smarts. They wanted the software and what was going on with their app team. And the first baby of the two coming together was to be this, the Fitbit Ionic. Now before the Ionic, the Fitbits were pretty dumb. They were just a slither on your wrist that tracked fitness and gave you a message and call alert. They didn't have an app store or any extra abilities to make it a smart watch. This was to be their first smart watch. It's set to be a game changer with the new OS and app store from Pebble, as well as the awesome fitness capabilities that you already have from Fitbit. However, there's one new feature which hadn't really been seen on smart watches before and that was inbuilt music. With this feature, you could download music onto the watch itself and then connect it to some Bluetooth headphones and go for a run. No phone, no iPod, just your watch and headphones. Really good in theory, but did it pull off? Well, my wife actually purchased me the Ionic and these headphones as a birthday gift. I would not shut up about the Ionic, drooling about the whole backstory of Pebble, hoping that it would be the end all smart watch. However, when I went for my first run, every single step I took, the music cut out. It was quite strange and I thought maybe they were just a little bit flat, but I checked again and they were both fully charged. I'd run some more and the music just kept cutting out. With every step, the music would cut out until I realized that it was the moment my arm was behind my back that the music stopped. See, the watch has to obviously pass its signal through to the headphones via Bluetooth. Now this signal is usually pretty strong. I can't remember the last time I used Bluetooth headphones and had the signal cut out. However, with the watch, it seems to be so low powered that it can't even transmit through your body. The moment I put the headphones on, the receiver is here on the right hand side and the watch is on my left wrist. Every single step I would take, it would cut out when trying to transfer through my body. The transmission was so patchy that it was unusable. Now I thought there's gotta be a simple solution to this problem. So I jumped on the Fitbit forums and unfortunately there wasn't. See, multiple users reported the exact same problem. They were using their headphones and every single step they took, it would cut out. And all we could get from Fitbit support was there was an issue with our headsets and we had to buy Fitbit flyers. Now this was really annoying, it was like copy paste response of, well we don't really know about third party stuff, so you probably should just buy our things because they're tried and tested. Now I highly considered it, but luckily I checked out the reviews for the Fitbit flyers and you guessed it, it was the same. There are a ton of reviews, especially on Amazon, of people who purchase the Ionic that are having issues with the flyers. And these are Fitbit's own headsets. So I continued going through the forums and I found posts where Fitbit were saying, just wear the watch on your right wrist so it's closer to the transmitter. And this was even in response to people that had the flyers. Furthermore, about a year on, Fitbit released the Versa, the next smartwatch that was meant to, I guess, be an alternative to the Ionic. And you guessed it, same issue. So they've got all of these reports of this problem with the headsets and they're not fixing it. Now I know this video is a little bit late, I've already recorded this rant before a couple years ago when I was on those forums talking about the issue that I was having. The annoyance is that there's been multiple OS updates for the watch, so clearly this is not a software issue, more so a hardware fault. They've then taken the feature and chucked it into another watch and continued to sell it with that fault in hand. Okay, so we want some proof of this issue. So I've come out here to this paddock. There is no one else around and my phone is turned off. So there's no more interference from wireless devices. I'm gonna put my right earphone in so the receiver is in the position it should be. And I'm gonna hold the left earphone up to the lapel so you can hear the music.
So why make this video in 2020 when there's already a new version of the Versa out and the Onyx is old news? Well, it's still for sale. It's still on the Fitbit website and it's being cleared out from certain stores around the place. And I'm hoping this video might save you from purchasing it and being disappointed in the lack of feature set. To start off with, when you get the watch or need to do any OS upgrades, it is unbearably slow. The Wi-Fi is so flaky that usually it just switches between Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth until it eventually gets through. If your phone sleeps or gets moved anywhere in this update process, it crashes and starts again. However, this process can be an hour long. Now this carries over to actually transferring the music to the watch. When you finally get the watch connected and open up the Fitbit app, half of the time it crashed because my iTunes library was too large. Now unfortunately any of the apps that I've downloaded from the open app store, which you can also dev yourself at dev.fitbit.com, I mean, pretty laggy. Now this could be up to that third party developer. However, it doesn't seem to perform well with anything that's not made by Fitbit. So after all of that, should you buy the Ionic? Well, if you're after a smartwatch, no. It still has smartwatch features that work. It has tap and go payments. You can do Strava, other apps on it. However, I don't really see it as a smartwatch and more so just an overpriced fitness tracker. And if you're after just a fitness tracker, buy the Xiaomi Band 4. It has a heart rate monitor, notifications, OLED screen. Check it out, it's like 30, 40 bucks, way cheaper than something like the Fitbit. Now there is hope for Fitbit to come up with a killer smartwatch as Google bought them out last year. So just like Fitbit bought Pebble to get better apps onto their watches, Google, which creates Android Wear OS, one of the most popular smartwatch operating systems, hopefully comes out with something under Fitbit. We'll see. All the headphones I tested are Bluetooth 4 or higher. I've also tested out audio files from 128 kilobits through to 320 kilobits. So I've done some technical testing and I'll still have the issues. However, I haven't heard of any issues with the Versa 2 smartwatch. So if you're wanting this music feature, check out that or maybe Garmin's uh, offering. Otherwise, that Xiaomi band is linked below. If you want more fitness tech, I've got a smart scale review coming up. Otherwise, there'll be a new tech video for you next week. Check out some of the past videos there and there and we'll, um, See you around. Bye.